And even though we don't really need the wind, the wind is cleaning nature, helping some things, getting rid of others. And it's hard, it's difficult sometimes, but you must always try to find the kindness, the goodness, and the wonderful things in life and with other people. And that is the most trying task you'll have in your world. And that is finding good in everything. But you can do it, you're programmed to do it, and that is what you must strive for. Strive for your beliefs, your thoughts. Strive to be the good, sweet, gentle child that God created. You'll have days you'll backslide. You'll have days will be very difficult. You'll have days you wonder why you even bother. But that's where you and God enter the picture. You go within. He takes you by the hand. He leads you. He guides you. He holds you. He comforts you. And in the meantime, you have all these wonderful guardians. You have angels. You have your forces. And they're waiting. They're waiting for you to say something, to beckon them, to start to do something that they may give you guidance and help. And your journey through Earth Sometimes it's very trying, very difficult, and it seems like you're all alone. But always remember, no matter who you are, where you're at, you're, the angels are there for you, with you, and guiding you. You're never left alone. And that is a difficult thing to try to grasp and wrap your mind around, so to speak, when perhaps you're injured, Perhaps some disaster struck, so to speak, and there you are, nobody around you. And it's a difficult thing to grasp and tell yourself, I'm not alone. But you are not alone. The Father and Mother God is there. All your angel forces are there. And you've heard of miraculous things happening in your world. Someone got lost. In the blinding snowstorm, days went by and everybody was 100% positive they were dead. Because nobody could survive in that kind of weather that number of days and still be alive. And yet, they found them. And they were a little battered for wear, but they were very much alive. And many times you hear many wonderful things that everybody give up hope. There's just no way. It's impossible. No matter who you speak to, it just can't be done. And yet, there they are. They're alive. They're well. Why? Because they knew who to turn to. They knew who to trust and who to love. They realized at that moment in time, when there wasn't any physical object around them to keep them warm, to sustain them, to guide them, to give them comfort, there was the Father, Mother, God, and their loved ones, and their angels. They were all there with them, doing everything they needed to do because it wasn't time yet for them to come home. So you see, people in your world call it miracles. We don't. We just call it, this is what we do. And as you open your spiritual doors, as you begin to realize all the wonderful things that's there for you, as we were reading to you about music. And you know yourself sometimes if you're tired, irritable, or just kind of out of sorts. And it doesn't matter what the music is, it's what's pleasing to you. You listen to some music. Pretty soon you're humming, your mind's drifting with the music, and Oh, pretty soon this, that, and the other was so disturbing. It's in the back of your mind, pretty soon it's gone. You're just enjoying the music. Because what it is doing is releasing you. And that is the way with many things. And that is why in your world it's become so hard. Because everybody wants something to entertain them. They want this. 
so they can be entertained. They want facts so they can be entertained. People are losing sight of doing things for themselves, such as reading a book, such as playing games, such as just whatever crosses their mind, perhaps going out, sitting in the yard, watching the birds, anything that will relax, take the mind out of where it's at, open up doors to new things. Even your children today, their imagination is gone for most part, because if they don't have this to entertain them, that to entertain them, or someone to take them somewhere, they don't have nothing to do. They can't think of a thing. They don't know how to invent games. They don't know how to make up this and make up that. They don't know how to go out in the yard and just take whatever's available, make a game out of it, play this, play that. No, they stand there and holler, there's nothing to do. And that's becoming more and more prevalent in your world today. People have lost the ability to use their mind. And that is quite true in most everywhere you look. Everybody has to follow the rules and regulations. Everybody has to be told what to do and what not to do. Everybody has to have a list of something or other so they know where they're at. And on it goes. What is wrong with just walking outdoors, saying, I'm going to take a hike today. Or I think I'll go over here and dig around in the dirt and see if I can find some pretty stones. Or maybe I'm going to take and just gather up this and this and see what I can make out of it. Anything, everything. The mind is limitless. The mind is a wonderful thing. And your scientists in your world will tell you the same thing the Father has told you. They cannot leash the power of the mind to its full extent because the force is so terrific. Which means the mind has an endless supply of everything you need, want, and ever will desire. But you hold the key. You have to lock the door. It is you that are in charge. So go sit down, talk to the Father, Mother, God. Embrace them and your angels, and all your forces. And you will have the greatest happiness, the most wonderful life, and the most blessings that you ever thought was possible. Because you are God's child, you are love and light, you are one with each other, one with the universe, God bless you all.